In the early 1600s in France, there was a young boy named René Descartes. René Descartes was often ill, and he spent a lot of time in bed. One day, he noticed a fly flying around the room, and it kept landing in different parts of the ceiling. He wanted to keep track of where the fly was, and so he arranged the ceiling into a grid using the tiles as a guide, and began recording the spots where the fly would land. This inspiration created what today we know as the coordinate plane, which is used in mathematics all around the world. The coordinate plane consists of an x-axis, which is horizontal, and a y-axis, which is vertical. The x and y axis break the grid into four pieces, known as quadrants. The first quadrant, the second quadrant, the third quadrant, and the fourth quadrant. These are typically written with Roman numerals I, II, III, and IV, but we have numbers for them in our system, 1, 2, 3, and 4. To remember the order in which these are arranged, think of the letter C. We start with quadrant 1 and we move around the letter C to quadrant 4. In algebra and geometry, we often use the coordinate plane to state the place where a certain point lies. That location is known as the coordinates. Notice on the graph there's a blue dot. We want to know where the location of that dot is, or in the case of René Descartes, where the fly is landed on the ceiling. We first look at the X. Notice that the point is above the 5 on the x-axis, and so the x value there is 5. Now let's look at the height. Notice that the height lines up with the 3 on the y-axis. We name our point as a coordinate pair, or an ordered pair, x, y. The x is 5, the y is 3. So we write this location as 5, 3. This is not to be confused with interval notation, but rather is simply a location on the graph. These are called the coordinates of the point. Anything in the form x, y is called an ordered pair. Now let's try a few more points. Can we write the coordinates of this point? Please pause the video here and see if you can write the coordinates. Let's see how you did. We begin by looking at the x-axis. The point is above the 8 on the x, so therefore the x value is 8. We now look at the y-axis. The point is at the level 2. The x is 8, the y is 2, so the coordinates of the point are 8, 2. Let's try another one. Can you write the coordinates of this point? Please pause the video here and come back when you finish. We first look at the x-axis. The point is above the 3, so the x value is 3. Then we look at the y-axis and see that our point is alongside the 6. The y is 6. Since x is 3 and y is 6, we write this as the ordered pair 3, 6. That's the location of the point on the graph. Points can be in any of the quadrants. Here we have a point in the second quadrant. Can you write the coordinates of this point? Pause the video here and come back when you've finished. We begin by looking at the x-axis. We're above the negative 3. We then look at the y-axis and we're at the 5. x is negative 3, y is 5, so we have the point negative 3, comma, 5. How about this point that's in the third quadrant? Can you write its coordinates? Pause the video here and come back when you finished. We notice that first this is at the negative 6 on the x-axis. Then we look across to the y and we see that we're at negative 7. x is negative 6, y is negative 7, so the coordinates are negative 6, comma, negative 7. How about this point in the fourth quadrant? Can you write its coordinates? Please pause the video here and give it a try. We begin by looking at the x-axis. We are at 5. We then look at the y-axis. We're at negative 4. x is 5, y is negative 4, so we have the point 5, comma, negative 4. Here's another example. This time we have a point that is on the x-axis. We begin by looking at the x. The x is 7. How high is the point? 
It's not high at all. In fact, it's right on the axis. It's at zero. The coordinates of this point are seven comma zero. Here's one for you to try. Can you write the coordinates of this point? Please pause the video here and give it a try. We look at this point and we see that the x value is negative three. We also see that the y value is zero. That gives us our x is negative three, our y is zero, negative three comma zero. How about a point on the y axis? We first look at the x value, go down to the x axis, and we are at zero on the x axis. How high are we on the y axis? We're at four. X is zero, y is four. The point is zero comma four. Here's one for you to try. Can you write the coordinates of this point? Please pause the video here and give it a try. We first look at the x-axis and see that our x-axis is at zero. We then look at the y and see that we're at negative five. X is zero, y is negative five, so we have zero comma negative five. Here's an interesting one for you. Can you write the coordinates of this point where the x and the y-axis intersect? Pause the video here and write down what you think the coordinates of this point are. In this one, it turns out that both x and y are zero. This is the point zero comma zero. This is where the x and the y-axis intersect. This point has a special name called the origin. Sometimes we actually want to plot a point ourselves. Look at this exercise. Plot the point two comma seven. In this case, we know that x is two and y is seven. We begin by going on the x-axis, going to two, and then on the y-axis, going to seven. We find the line where those two intersect, and that's where we plot our point, at two comma seven. Here's one for you to try. We want to plot the point negative four, negative six. Go to the negative four on the x-axis and the negative six on the y-axis, plot that point, and come back and let's see how you did. Here, we know that x is negative four, and so we begin on our x-axis at negative four. We know that y is negative six, so we go down to negative six on the y-axis, and we find the point where those intersect. That intersection is where we plot our point, negative four, negative six. And now you know all about the coordinate plane created by Rene Descartes in the 1600s, it takes a little bit of practice, but once you get good at it, you can do a lot of things mathematically, so I highly recommend practicing and feeling good about using the coordinate plane.